Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today we're going to be looking at how several different weapons interact with one of the most vulnerable pieces of armor on uh, a European harness, and that's the visor. So previously we've used things like a horseman's axe and a spear and even a big three-headed flail uh, to try and examine how sharp weapons interact with armor. Now, we've had several kinds of armor. Ooh, sorry about that shaking. Uh, including, right, this two dozen layers of quilted linen, this riveted mail, and even this fancy Gothic pauldron in hardened steel, uh, which the only thing that went through it was an English bill right here. If you want to check out that video, I'll link to it. Uh, but really, when you attack someone in armor, you don't have much chance to go through the strongest parts, right? Your sword isn't going to go through their breastplate. It's probably not going to go through the top of their helmet. Instead, right, you aim for the weaknesses that exist in the armor. And one of the biggest weaknesses is the visor, right? Because it has holes in it, so you can see through it and so you can breathe. So this is a visor that I made a few years ago and I was just messing around, so I raised it uh, from a piece of uh, 16 gauge mild steel, uh, but it's pretty solid. I've done a bunch of training in it. I recently made myself a better one. So we'll sacrifice this visor to science. All right, guys, so I've got this visor on this heavy boxing bag here. It's up against a heavy safe, actually, so it won't move anywhere, but it gives uh, some give, kind of like a body would, like a person would. And first, I'm gonna try stabbing this with a long range weapon, right? So this is our 12th century spear. And you can see here, it's made of hardened carbon steel uh, on an ash haft. So I'm going to try and thrust and see if these breathing holes, which are called breaths, or uh, the ocular holes really give me any kind of purchase and how much of a chance I would have to stab through this if I was being attacked. Safety third. got caught in one of the holes, but it didn't do any damage. Let's try again. Oh. Let's see. Yep, a couple superficial scratches, uh, but nothing else really. So even with this being a mild steel uh, visor, I believe I made this out of 16 gauge or 18 gauge steel. It looks like 18 gauge. Uh, no deformation. It got stuck in one of these holes initially. Sorry, this hole. All right, you can see where the spear hit and skated up to the eye. Uh, really, these defenses worked pretty well against a spear. You can also see that this pointed snout did well at directing thrusts away from the center of the helm. This visor, despite being made of really quite thin, unhardened material, its geometry and the placement, the traditional placement of these holes, really didn't pose a significant threat, right? The spear skated off of it. I'm sure that if I were wearing this and I was on horseback, right, and I ran into someone jousting with that spear, I'd be pretty worried about it coming through. But uh, for foot combat, it really is pretty good defense. So in uh, many of the uh, depictions and uh, stories and fighting manuals of fighting in armor, one of the things that's mentioned is using a dagger to target the eyes, right? So you can, this is one of our Bollock daggers. And it, it's based on one of the Wallace collection uh, that we were able to, you know, look at really closely and handle. 
to replicate it. This is a good representation of 14th century Bollock dagger. Uh, you can see that you can get the point into these ocularia just a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna see if by putting this down level on that heavy bag, I can simulate a situation in which the knight's been thrown to the ground and I'm trying to stab him in the eye with this sharp dagger. Let's see how it goes. All right, so I have this visor. I have it on this heavy boxing bag, which again, is kind of similar to it being on a body. Let's imagine I have dismounted this knight. He's laying on the ground and I'm ready for the coup de grace. It's ready to kill him as a knight. So you can see that this dagger has a very thick back spine. It has a single edge. It's quite sharp. It's nicely in the hand. I'm gonna try first to percussively stab this and see what happens. I'm gonna aim for the eyes. I'm a little bit afraid I might maul myself on the hound's nose of this visor, but I'm gonna try and do it good and hard while avoiding personal injury. The safety third, ready? <laughs> it's going into the bag there. Uh, it's actually pretty hard to aim when you're hitting that hard uh, downward with a dagger. Um, I skated across it a little bit, didn't go in. Now I'm going to try placing the dagger on the ocularia and forcing the dagger through. Let's see if we're able to do that. Here it is. <sighs> Well, got some penetration there. There we go. Had to put a lot of force into it, but, and that, this guy would be dead, <laughs> right? For sure. So you're definitely vulnerable to getting stabbed in the eye, even if you have these, you know, high tech at the time, uh, face protection. If you wanna see there's gonna be a weakness. Now, if you look at armors that are for jousting and things like that, right, that are massively reinforced with just a little eye slit, that's a jousting armor, right? It's different from the kind of armor that you'd be wearing fighting in combat or fighting on foot most of the time. Those have to have more breaths and better vision so that you can see and breathe, right? If you're just jousting, uh, right, all you need to do is see that guy right in front of you. But if you're actually fighting, you want something you can see a bit more with. And here, inside of there, you can see that this dagger busted through and would have killed. But it was work. It was tough to get that through there. I had to put a lot of muscle uh, and weight behind it. I'm not a small guy, and it took quite a bit. Right, so if you've thrown your enemy on the ground, you gotta be prepared to really lean into that dagger, of course. It's perfectly fine. But what if we try a more dramatic weapon? Something that's meant to really go through plate. Of course, the new hardened horseman's ax, which I love and take any opportunity to smash stuff with. So this weapon really is designed for breaking the articulations in plate armor at the height of its development during the Gothic period. Let's see what happens if you really clobber someone right in the visor with this spike. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, Right? You really don't have a chance. So you'll remember this didn't go through hardened armor, right? That hardened steel pauldron from an earlier uh, episode. It broke the articulations, but it didn't go straight through it. That was a hardened steel, uh, pretty heavy duty pauldron. This piece of raised mild steel uh, is really vulnerable to this kind of attack apparently. And these ocular, or these breaths, these breathing holes 
I think what happens is they give this point purchase to punch through, right? If I hit it somewhere where there's no friction, no grip like the top of this, it's unlikely to punch through as readily. But when this point can get into one of these holes, one of these breaths, all of a sudden that force can be directed straight back into it, right? It's crazy. I'm gonna hit it one more time. This time I'll turn it this way, go for the eyes. Oh, I missed the eyes, but I went back through the nose again. Right. And this, despite this steel being mild steel, the process of hot raising it really work hardens this stuff. So this steel is, I can't deform it just by squeezing it or anything like that. It's a pretty solid piece. Now it has two snout holes. So what's the uh, moral of the day? Well, if you're gonna attack someone in armor, attack the weak points. The visor is one of those weak points, but it's still not super easy to get in there, especially if they're fighting against you, right? Which I kind of used the spear as a simulation of, right? They're standing up. These are really good at deflecting and protecting. If they're laying on the ground and you have your dagger or you have your big ax, you can certainly get through it. And I think this is how knights died. All right, take care, guys.